Ezekiel chapter 4, the siege of Jerusalem portrayed. The specific prophecy that begins this chapter is the first of a series of prophecies addressing the coming fall of Jerusalem. These prophecies being given over a, a year's time in the next four chapters through Ezekiel 7 verse 27. The Believer's Study Bible says, quote, Though mute, Ezekiel was to declare a message in meme for the city of Jerusalem. Ezekiel scratched either the city map or a view of the skyline of Jerusalem upon the clay tablet, a sun-baked mud brick commonly used in writing. This was the first of a series of symbolic acts found in Ezekiel 4 through 6, which were part of his messages to the exiles. Such symbolic acts were one of the ways that the prophets communicated their messages. Jeremiah wore a yoke about his neck, Jeremiah 27. Isaiah walked naked and barefoot for three years, Isaiah 20. Ezekiel was told to act out the coming siege of Jerusalem. On a brick of soft clay, he drew a picture of Jerusalem, built a siege wall, a tower, connected the two with a ramp, and arranged camps or soldiers to besiege it. The strength of the besiegers and the impossibility of escape was represented by the iron plate Ezekiel set up. News of Ezekiel's strange action would have spread quickly throughout the community of Jewish exiles and they would have to come to watch. The meaning of the display would not be too difficult to discern. Their beloved city, Jerusalem, surrounded by siege, certainly indicated it would again be besieged by an enormously powerful army. Imagine what must have gone through the minds of the exiles. Surely, in this case, the sign would be as impressive and perhaps even more so than any spoken utterance. Ezekiel's was demonstrating that a picture is worth a thousand words. Because pictures convey strong, memorable images and pictures etched on bricks would not quickly fade away. Sometimes the Lord will call us to do things that seem ridiculous and do not make any sense at all. Our job is simply to obey. It says, You also, son of man, take a clay tablet and lay it before you and portray on it a city, Jerusalem. Lay siege against it, build a siege wall against it, and heap up a mound against it. Set camps against it also and place battering rams against it all around. Jesus went on to describe the Roman siege in imagery similar to Ezekiel, declaring that, quote, the day shall come upon you when your enemies will throw up a bank before you and surround you, build a wall around you and hem you in on every side and will level you to the ground and your children within you. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Luke 19. In perfect fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy, in AD 70, the Roman general Titus surrounded Jerusalem with a siege wall. The Jews managed to destroy this embankment of hewn trees, after which Titus surrounded the city with a wall of masonry. This ladder, which normally took months to build, was built in three days by the determined Roman army. This strategy cut off all hope of escape and led to the unparalleled horror that followed. Ezekiel would be very familiar with the significance of a siege, for he had been carried captive to Babylon after the siege of Jerusalem in 597 BC. And he was writing these prophecies before the final siege. Quite likely, many of the exiles in his audience were also all too familiar with the picture of a siege. Keep in mind that Jerusalem 
was a well-fortified city and it would take Babylon months to capture it. A siege or prolonged military blockade of Jerusalem would force it to surrender by taking away the advantage of the city's defensive walls, by cutting outside contact and halting the flow of food, supplies, and weapons. Ezekiel was asked to communicate this message in very unusual ways. He used a clay tablet and an iron plate as an illustration in his preaching. He had to lie on his left side for 390 days and his right side for 40 days. He had to eat in an unclean manner by cooking his bread over cow manure. The principle for us is, God is not restricted in the means he uses to get our attention as shown by this silent movie. Has God been doing something unusual in your life that could indicate he is trying to get your attention? Are you listening? In verse 3 it says, Take for yourself an iron plate and set it as an iron wall between you and the city. Ezekiel made an unbreakable barrier between himself and the scene he constructed. This symbolized the barrier between God and Jerusalem, meaning that God would not intervene and rescue Jerusalem in the coming siege. It was the kind of utensil that the priest used in the temple for preparing some of the offerings. The iron griddle symbolized the wall that stood between God and the sinful Jewish nation so that he could no longer look on them with approval and blessing. In verses 4 through 6, Ezekiel is told to lie on his left and right side. Ezekiel was to act out this ritual for 390 days. Perhaps he did it at night when he slept, or some regular time of the day. After the 390 days for the house of Israel, he was then to do it for 40 days to symbolically bear the iniquity of the house of Judah. In verses 7 through 8, it says, Then you shall set your face toward the siege of Jerusalem with your arm bared and prophesy against it. The arm bared is a symbol of being ready to take action, as in Isaiah 52.10, The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, that all the ends of the earth may see the salvation of our God. The prophet was not to be an apathetic spectator of the siege, which he was thus dramatizing, but actively to dramatize the event. This picture of the prophet not merely resting on his side and folding his hands as a man at ease might do, but instead looking intently with bare outstretched arm at the scene inscribed on the brick must have added to the startling effect of this sign to the house of Israel. So what is the principle for us? Any messenger of God must first feel and experience what it is that he is preaching. He must learn it himself before he can teach it to others. If we are going to be effective in communicating the gospel message to a lost and dying world, we must first sense our own unworthiness and need. In verses 9-13, through 13, during the 390 days of lying on his side, Ezekiel was commanded to make bread of many different grains and eat it during those days. This shows that during those days, Ezekiel was not completely inactive and laying on his side continually. The unusual bread was an acted out prediction of life during a siege, when anything and everything that could be eaten was. It was also carefully measured out by weight as bread and water would be carefully weighed and rationed during a siege. In verses 14 through 17, how Ezekiel cooked the bread was very unusual. Bake it using fuel of human waste. In this, Ezekiel demonstrated not only the desperation of a siege, but also the misery of exile among the Gentiles, where care for keeping kosher food and its preparation were impossible. Ezekiel objected to the command 
to prepare bread from a fire fueled by burning human waste. It was both disgusting and against kosher customs. Ezekiel's objection was based on the fact that he had never so offensively broken Jewish dietary laws. See, I am giving you cow dung instead of human waste. So God accommodated the appeal of the prophet. The lesson could be made without actually using human waste to bake the bread. We may be feeling that certain trials are insupportable or certain demands beyond our power to meet. At such hours of bitter anguish, it is quite permissible for us to go into the secret place of the Most High and gasp out our complaint saying, Ah, Lord God. The purpose of all the acts in symbolic form was to impress the people with the coming famine during the siege of Jerusalem and the people's pollution and exile among the heathen. Thus their sins would bring them to the extremest want and shame. In conclusion, how might we react today to a prophet like Ezekiel? Would his actions be accepted or would they be dismissed? Sometimes the Lord will call us to do things that seem ridiculous and do not make any sense. Our job is simply to obey. Despite the ominous nature of Ezekiel chapter 4, the chapter serves as a profound reminder of the consequences of turning from God's ways. Nevertheless, God's justice is tempered with mercy. Maranatha.